pyramids can be found in nearly every region of the world. Ancient civilizations were all building these incredible structures, despite being separated by tens of thousands of miles, and even thousands of years in some cases. The alignments and mathematics used in the construction of nearly all of these structures was extremely precise and accurate, only matched by the work we do today with fine-tuned machinery and lasers. And many, not just the Giza pyramids, aligned with the poles and entire constellations, and included technological components in their construction, as well as gigantic megalithic blocks weighing hundreds of tons. But where did this knowledge originate? Why did so many ancient cultures build such similar constructions? And how far back does this knowledge really go? Scholars will tell you that the Djoser Pyramid in the necropolis of Saqqara in Egypt is the oldest in the world. Built by the Pharaoh Djoser and his architect Imhotep around the year 2650 BC. The structure is just over 4,000 years old, said to be built only 70 years before the Great Pyramid. Very little is known about the reign of Djoser, but his mummy was believed to have been laid to rest within his pyramid. However, when archeologists entered the inner chambers, no mummy was found just an empty sarcophagus alongside over 40,000 stone urns and pots. But why did Djoser and Imhotep decide to build such a unique structure? According to Egyptologists, the shape of the pyramid was seen as a representation of the primeval mound that emerged from the waters of chaos in the Egyptian creation mythology. Imhotep's design was a creative and innovative interpretation of these religious beliefs. They believed that in the beginning there was nothing but darkness and chaos, symbolized by the waters of the primordial ocean. Within this vast dark expanse there emerged a sacred mound known as the Benben, or the primeval mound. It was said to be a small pyramid-shaped hill, the first solid land to appear from the waters of chaos. On top of the Benben, the god Ra, often associated with the sun, was born. Ra took various forms, and in this context he was often depicted as a giant scarab beetle, or a man with the head of a hawk. Ra possessed tremendous creative and life-giving powers. As Ra emerged from the mound, he surveyed the desolate waters, determined to bring order and life to the world. He began to create other gods and beings. He first created Shu, the god of air, and Tefnut, the goddess of moisture. Shu and Tefnut represented the fundamental elements necessary for life and creation. They in turn gave birth to Jeb, the god of the earth, and Nut, the god of the sky. Jeb and Nut became the parents of Osiris, Isis, Seth, and Nephthys, among other deities. These gods and goddesses played significant roles in the Egyptian mythology and history. Ra continued to rule over the world, bringing light and order to it during the day, and descending into the underworld during the nighttime. This cycle of creation and renewal was central to the Egyptian beliefs about the nature of the universe and the role of the gods in maintaining a cosmic balance. This story was why Imhotep decided to create the first pyramid. But was he really the first? And does this story of the sun god and a primeval mound play out in any other of these pyramid building mythologies? Across the ocean on the opposite side of the world, ancient people were building the same structures. Deep in the Guatemalan jungle, archaeologists discovered the lost city of La Danta. Believed to date back to 300 BC, making it the oldest of the pyramids built by the Maya. To the north in the Mexican state of Tabasco sits an even older pyramid, La Venta, built by the Olmec around 900 BC. 
but the oldest pyramid of the Olmecs is the San Lorenzo Pyramid, dating back to the year 1200 BC. For reference, this was a period shortly following the exodus of the Jews from Egypt in the Bible, when the Israelites were beginning to conquer the Promised Land in Canaan. The city of San Lorenzo is considered the capital of the Olmecs by scholars, and was where several of the colossal heads were uncovered, along with many other extremely ancient artifacts. Other than what archaeologists can uncover, very little is known about its creation or why they built it in such a way. This is a pretty unique looking pyramid, especially for Mesoamericans. But we do see a much later pyramid over in Cambodia that looks eerily similar. But San Lorenzo isn't even close to being the oldest pyramid in the Americas. But who did build the first? Where did this style of building originally come from? Much further south in Peru, lived several old civilizations that are thought to have similar beliefs and traditions to the later Inca people. Some of these being the Nazca civilization, who made the famous Nazca lines and have a pyramidal structure of their own, and the Chavin culture. The Moche people, who also built pyramids. The Tiwanaku civilization. The Karal Supe people. These were the builders of the oldest pyramids in South America, the Corral Pyramids, which are said to date back to around 2600 BC, the exact same time period as the Great Pyramids of Giza and the Djoser Pyramid we looked at before. But it goes further than that. These civilizations in Peru also worshipped a sun deity known as Viracocha, who much like Ra in Egypt was the creator sun god. Also just like those in Egypt, the pyramids at Kural were oriented to the stars. So we know astronomy and mathematics were studied here. And excavations have turned up evidence of technological advances, predating other cultures by thousands of years. The builders of Kural had knowledge of fluid dynamics, earthquake prevention, and rudimentary chemistry. They also traded across vast distances, with evidence of shells from Ecuador, minerals from Bolivia, and funerary practices borrowed from Chile. And there's no indicator that the Corral civilization ever manufactured weapons or built defensive walls. All at the same time, Egypt was building their pyramids. A few other anomalies that are found almost exclusively in Peru and Egypt are the existence of humans with elongated skulls. Head binding was common in South America, yet there are some elongated skulls that show a larger than normal amount of mass in the skull, and some of them are missing the sagittal suture, both of which are only possible if they were born this way. Head binding alone wouldn't cause this. And in Egypt, the god Osiris and many of the pharaohs were depicted with these same elongated skulls. Here's a statue of the famous mother of King Tut, Queen Nefertiti. And then there's the practice of mummification, which both these two cultures practiced. Could these ancient people somehow have been in contact with each other? Or could they have descended from an earlier unknown civilization? What if I told you even these aren't the oldest pyramids on Earth? In India, in the state of Uttar Pradesh, we find such a pyramid. This pyramid known as Behim's Gada dates back to around 3000 BC, that's 5000 years ago. For reference, that is 300 years before the time of Gilgamesh in Mesopotamia. You may have never even heard of this site. It's extremely difficult to find any information on this anywhere on the internet, but there is one video from Praveen Mohan, where he actually visits the pyramid and tells us a little about it. I'll link to this video below, and if you've never heard of him, I recommend you check out his work. No one has more knowledge about ancient India than him, and he asks questions about the past that others do not. He shows us how much of this pyramid is actually still unexcavated, 
and sitting below layers of dirt. We can also see these incredible bricks that look similar to other Ayurvedic structures. Praveen tells us that this site is said to be named after a giant, Behima, whose megalithic club is said to still sit on top of the pyramid today. The story goes that a group of Nagas came to this area and built this pyramid. The Nagas were a race of semi-divine serpent beings that existed alongside man in ancient Hindu texts and were often worshipped. Mysteriously, we find many serpent depictions at the Saqqara Pyramid, where the Pyramid of Djoser sits as well. And the people of Peru and Mesoamerica also renowned the symbol of the serpent and put it all over their structures as well. I have a whole video tracing serpent imagery around America. I'll link to that below too, but here's a few images showing serpent-like creatures around Peru. Another site that is not quite a perfect pyramid, but a pyramidal structure, dates back to 3000 BC as well, is the Sayauk Ziggurat. So the people of Sumeria were also building similar structures at this exact same time. But oftentimes, pyramids that go back to such a time have been left destroyed by Mother Nature. Many pyramids that we found have had to be completely dug up by archaeologists, and some still lie under layers of dirt. In China, there are sites known as the Tarm Basin Burial Mounds that are thought to have been massive pyramidal mounds in their prime. These sites mysteriously contain mummies, much like we find in Egypt and Peru. And in North America, there are thousands of these pyramidal mound sites that date back to even older than Bahim's Gada Pyramid. Mound sites like Watson's Break, Louisiana, Crystal River, Letchworth Love, and King's Crossing in Florida all have mound sites that date back to before 3000 BC. And even the famous site of Poverty Point is speculated to go back to this time period as well. So even before the Vedic civilization in India built pyramids, when the first pharaohs of Egypt were still uniting the Nile region, and when most civilizations were bordering on the line of mythology and history, North America was a complex system of great cities with pyramids and civilizations that had more advancements than some of the later tribes. And don't be fooled, these mounds were impressive structures rivaling the pyramids in Mexico and Egypt in their prime. It's just that 5,000 years takes its toll. These sites were in fact often made of brick and were not always covered with earth. It wasn't until later on that the weak bricks began to fail and thousands of years of sediment was deposited on top of them. They also were built in alignment with celestial objects, like we see at other pyramidal sites. Entire constellations were replicated on the ground, and each pyramid represented a star or a node in the constellation. Within these pyramid mounds in North America, giant skeletons have been found, and not just a few, but hundreds. Native Americans knew these sites were sacred, and they reveal to us that ancient man was not as primitive as once thought. We still don't know how many mounds there are in North America. Many have been destroyed by construction or mistaken for hills. In fact, there are many mountains and hills that very well could be ancient pyramids. The oldest pyramid in the world might still be waiting under the ground or even under the sea. There was that pyramid complex found years ago off the coast of Cuba. So take a second look next time you see a pyramidal looking hill or mountain. Many of these sites we looked at today are not definitively dated with 100% accuracy. Archaeology is a game of best guesses in some cases when it comes to dating. And many speculate that some of these pyramids go back to even a much earlier period. Researchers like Graham Hancock have devised many theories about sites like the Great Pyramids, Teotihuacan, the Cholula Pyramid, and Poverty Point, saying they may go back to prehistory, before the Younger Dryas over 12,000 years ago and beyond. 
This is a topic for a whole nother video, but these researchers point to alignments to star systems that date back to such a period, such as the alignment of the Great Sphinx and the constellation of Leo in 10,500 BC. Many ancient peoples also tell stories of these pyramids being built by an ancient race of people that was separate from our own. In Mexico, the Aztec held the belief that the pyramids at Teotihuacan and the Great Pyramid of Cholula was built by this predecessor race of giants they called the Kinametzin. And they were destroyed and taken out by a massive flood that left the structures completely buried and left to look like mounds of dirt. All right, let me know in the comments if you know any other extremely old pyramids that I missed here. And let me know what you think about some of the similarities we find in these ancient pyramids, like the detail about the race of serpent people building them. I think there's more to look into about these Nagas and serpent symbolism across ancient cultures. If you want to follow what I'm researching, I post any articles or videos I watch on Patreon. And we can start a discussion there as well. It's only $3 and it goes towards researching these topics, so I hope to hear from you there. Thank you, see you all next time.